Hey everybody, I'm Richard from MSI and welcome to this new video. Build guides come in all kinds of colors and flavors and today we've decided to take time to build a PC with you from A to Z. First, let's take a look at a few things we'll need to equip ourselves with. First and foremost, you'll need a screwdriver. I recommend a medium sized Phillips screwdriver and a smaller one. The first one will be useful for all regular screws while the smaller one's going to be useful for tiny screws like the ones used for the M.2 drives. Pro tip, using a magnetized screwdriver is a big plus. It could cost you just a little bit more, but it'll save you a lot of time and trouble. Some zip ties or Velcro strips, as well as a pair of scissors. A clean, non-conductive surface to build your PC onto. Wood or ceramics are perfect, but beware of plastic coated tables to avoid static electricity. Last, take a deep breath, read the manuals closely, and you are good to go. Before I forget, motherboards and other electronic components are extremely fragile. Make sure to keep your workspace organized and unpack each item only as you go. Also, leave the protective covering in place until the very last moment. First of all, we want to install the CPUs. CPUs come in two different standards for consumer motherboards. We have LGA and PGA. LGA is used on all Intel processors. This means that the CPU pins are not on the CPU, but in the socket. Although this makes handling the CPU much safer, be careful when placing the processor inside it. PGA is used on AMD processors that have pins underneath. Make sure you handle these CPUs with extra care by holding them on the sides carefully. Take out the motherboard from its original packaging and place it onto a plain surface. Open the lid of the CPU socket first. Then, take out the CPU and place it inside the socket. You will see that there are guides on the sides of the processor and even small triangles printed and marked on the socket to help you place the processor properly. As a rule of thumb, remember that these parts are designed to fit precisely. The placement of the processor should be effortless and not require any pressure. Now, close the lid. You might want to hold the motherboard and push a little extra here to make sure to safely lock the lid onto the processor. You will notice that we didn't remove the protection lid initially. This was on purpose. As the lid closes on the CPU, the plastic cover gets automatically ejected. Your processor is now secured and properly connected to your motherboard. Today's motherboards are using dim memory. The modules look like this and are rated at different standards and speeds. The current standard is known as DDR4. It is important to purchase memory that is compatible with your motherboard. Here at MSI, you can always take a look at your motherboard's product page on our website to identify which modules are certified to be compatible. Installing memory is very simple. First, you must open the retention clips that are located at the ends of the memory banks. Then, take each stick and insert these one by one into the slots. There is a little notch here at the bottom of the stick to guide you. Push the modules down and you'll hear a click as the retention clips are pushed upwards and lock the module. Repeat for the amount of sticks you have and you're done. Pro tip, look at the printed layout on your motherboard. This indicates which banks you should use. For example, if you only have two memory modules for a four slot motherboard, this will tell you which slots to use. M.2 SSD drives are the new standard for ultra-fast storage. Your motherboard comes with one or more dedicated M.2 slots for you to install a drive. We recommend you install your M.2 drive early in the build. You could do it later, but the other components might get in the way. M.2 drives can have different sizes, so you might need to adjust the position of this little standoff that's pre-mounted on the board. Then, take your drive and gently insert it into the connector at a 45 degree angle. Push it down towards the standoff and secure it with the little screw. This is the moment where a small magnetized screwdriver truly comes in handy. Pro tip! If your motherboard comes with a special cooling solution for your M.2 drives, make sure to have it properly in place. It only takes a few minutes, but it's well worth the extra effort to keep your drives cool. Installing the CPU cooler is the last step before putting your motherboard into the case. Most coolers on the market will require you to install a so-called back plate on the back of your motherboard. The plate reinforces the structure of your system as you are tightening the cooler onto the processor. Some coolers, however, won't require a back plate. 
That goes, for example, the standard Intel stock cooler. These don't use screws for tightening, but a clip-on tightening mechanism. With your backplate in place, you can now add a drop of thermal paste onto the surface of the processor. There are various schools and techniques as to how you should apply thermal paste best, but we recommend a simple one drop in the center which will spread out with pressure. Make sure you use the right amount of thermal paste. Too little will give you a bad contact and your processor will eventually overheat. Too much and you might make a mess, possibly getting paste into your socket. Place the cooler by lowering it vertically, avoiding sideways movements. Secure it evenly, tightening opposite screws progressively. Finally, don't forget to connect the fan connector to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. And you are done. The same process goes for all-in-one water cooling. Before we place the motherboard and connected components into the case, we must first prepare the chassis. With your motherboard comes an I.O. panel shield, which looks like this. Each motherboard panel has a slightly different layout, which depends on which I.O.s you have. The I.O. shield is placed at the back of the case and serves two main functions. First, it closes the motherboard axis from the back of the case by filling up the holes in between the I.O.s. Second, it serves as a printed manual to tell you which socket is for what. Next, check that your chassis has all the right standoffs to fit with the mounting holes present on your motherboard. You will need at least one standoff for each to ensure proper support. Take your motherboard and gently lower it at a 45 degree angle into the case. This step is a little tricky, so you may want to pay attention when aligning all the IOs with the corresponding holes on the IO shield panel. Make sure that none of the small metallic parts from the shield get stuck into any of the sockets. This could potentially short the connectors and eventually damage your motherboard. Take the big screwdriver to secure the board with each of the supplied screws. Don't leave out any screws. A solid mount will keep it secure for all transportation. A serious PC isn't quite so serious without a graphics card. These come in a variety of sizes and flavors, but the mounting is always the same. We must first decide which PCI slot it will be connected to. By default, choose the one at the top, closest to the processor. Then, remove the corresponding I.O. plates from the case. Always hold the card with two hands so it doesn't slip. Vertically insert the PCI connector into the PCI slot gently. If you are aligned properly, it should just fit and automatically lock into the slot. Finally, we must secure the card with the required screws at the back of the chassis. In addition to the PCI slot lock, these screws play a crucial role to secure the card. Pro tip! Some high-end cards are longer or use even more PCI space. Make sure to check that beforehand to choose the appropriate case. Storage is the most simple step in building a PC. There are two main dimensions, 2.5 inches and 3.5 inches. Both have standard mounting holes and can be mounted easily in any type of case. We recommend to check your chassis manual to secure the drives appropriately. For connectivity, we need to connect these drives using SATA cables. Connect one end of the cable to the motherboard SATA connectors and the other end to the drive itself. And that's it. Don't forget to connect the power from the PSU to the drives. The power supply ensures power delivery to your system. Choosing a solid and reliable power supply is a guarantee to protect your system against power surges. We recommend using a modular power supply as it is easier to mount. Mount the PSU into the chassis and secure it with all screws. Then, connect each of the cables one by one. First, the 24-pin header, which goes into the largest connector on the right side of your motherboard. 
Second, the CPU PSU Power 8 pin header, which is located at the top of the motherboard. Third, the graphics card. Here again, you might need two of these 6 plus 2 pin headers labeled PCI. Make sure to use the right amount so that everything is connected. And finally, connect all the storage drives to your system. Pro tip! Choosing the appropriate wattage for a power supply is key. You can use online PC build simulators such as the PC Part Picker to get an estimation of the power required by your build. Also, make sure to purchase a PSU with a little headroom to account for future upgrades. With all our components set up in the case, we must now finish connecting our cables that link our chassis to our motherboard. First, let's start with the front panel connectivity. These come with several cables with small jumper-like connectors at the end. We have a power switch, reset switch, power LED, and hard drive LED. Next comes the front USB ports. These can be USB 2.0 or 3.0. In any case, the connector will look like this and connects to the USB pin header on your motherboard. You may also have USB Type-C at the front of your chassis. Finally, audio. You can connect headphones and microphone jacks from the front of your case with this wire. Connect the audio cable to the motherboard's JAUD1 pin header. To complete our build, we must now proceed with the ultimate step in the process, cable management. Our goal here is to clean up the look of our system by hiding away all the overlength cables to the back of our case. We can use zip ties or Velcro strips to keep things neat and packed together. A modular PSU here definitely plays in our favor. And voila! Besides keeping it neat, this also helps with improving airflow within the case and avoids cables blocking airways or fans. We connect the PSU power cable to the back of the PSU. Flip the power switch and make sure that the lights indicating power is supplied to the motherboard is turned on. We press the power button at the front and success! Now let's install the operating system. Automatically, the motherboard is going to boot on the installation USB or DVD we've prepared with a Windows 10 image. Pro tip! If your system isn't booting from the installation medium, enter the BIOS and change the boot device priority. During the process, we select which storage device we want to install the operating system on and proceed with the installation. It's just that easy. A few minutes later and Windows is ready to use. We install the latest drivers from the motherboard support page on msi.com and we are done. Our PC is now complete with functioning hardware and software. From A to Z, there you have it. Building a PC has never been easier. With just a few simple steps, you can build a fully operational system for yourself, your friends, or your family right from scratch. That's it everybody. Thanks for watching.